Hi everyone, my name is Tim and I am doing uh, educational JavaScript videos that talk about software development and aim to teach people on how to build things with JavaScript, hence the Building X with JavaScript series name. I've been doing this for um, about two years, slightly more than that, and I hope that I would never have to make a video like this. Unfortunately, YouTube has other plans for me, so um, there we go. That's a video about the YouTube weirdness and the strange policies and where do I actually go from here. A couple of days ago, I received an email from YouTube that you can see on the screen right now that says that your video uh, called BPJS Electron App Part 2 Preparations has violated community guidelines and has been removed. I have uh, had an option to um, appeal for it, right? And this is exactly what I did because this is the video and I've re-uploaded it to Streamlabs so you can check it out yourself. There's two parts because Streamlabs only allows 10 minutes uh, segments, but uh, there you go. So the video is very straightforward, right? So we were building the Electron application and in the video I was talking about the preparations as in figuring out the UI patterns, figuring out the used libraries we need for user interface, for logic, for streaming, for video player, for subtitles, and so on and so forth. So it was very generic video with uh, nothing that I would, you know, think would violate the community guidelines of YouTube. So after I got the strike, I went to rewatch the video, the whole thing, right? Okay, you know, that seems fine. So I'm gonna appeal it. I've uh, looked at the policies, so we can try to look at them again. Uh, here are the community guidelines. So nudity or sexual content. Well, you know, I was dressed, so that seems to be okay. Harmful or dangerous content. I did not do any stunts or anything like that, so it seems to be okay as well. Hateful content. I was not really hating on, on anything or anyone. So, you know, I guess should be okay as well. Violent or graphic content. Uh, unless you consider JavaScript violent or graphic, then it should be fine. Harassment or cyberbullying. I did not do anything like this. Spam, misleading metadata and scams. Once again, unless you know you consider software development JavaScript scam, then it should be fine. Threats, I was not th doing, you know, giving any threats in that video. Copyright. Now this is something that might be related and this is my closest guess, but uh, we're gonna come back to that later. Uh, privacy, again, no personal information shared or anything like this. Impersonation, I only impersonate myself. Child safety, well, that's not exactly video for children, so you know it should be fine. There's additional range of policies that they don't even speak about, so maybe it's something of this. But my best guess is copyright, right? So uh, the video, among other things, talk about a bunch of tools that allow to stream and download videos, including YouTube DL, which is, uh, you know, something that allows you to download things from YouTube, which against, not exactly against copyright, but um, there we go. So I appealed it and a couple of days later, I got the um, another email that said, hey, after further review, we determined that your video does violate community guidelines and we upheld our decision and your video will be removed and people who want to go through the course will not see it on there. Um, so I was like, okay, you know, probably that's copyright and probably that's the YouTube DL mention, even though, you know, I didn't even talk about how to use it or anything like that. There is another video, by the way, that talks about that and it's still up and, and totally fine. So I was like, okay, you know, let me try to search for YouTube DL on YouTube and see if the videos like this are not allowed. And uh, well, as you can see right here, there is a billion tutorials on how to use YouTube DL, some of them six and seven years old, and um, it's okay. So it's definitely not that. One of the worst things about the violations on YouTube is that they never tell you what exactly you did, right? So the, the guys I asked on Twitter, the YouTube, uh, what, what was it, YouTube creators, I think, the account, and I was like, hey guys, so what, did, what exactly did I violate? They was like, we cannot disclose that. How the hell do I know what I did wrong and how can I learn from that? Now, um, now I have this strike, right? And it says, okay, you violated the community guidelines. It expires in January 26. If I get three strikes, my account closes down. Appeal is now rejected. And because I got the strike, I can no longer live stream. For example, I never tried live streaming on um, YouTube, but some people were asking me to do that. And I was looking into setting up the multi multi service live streams, but now I can't just, just because of this crap. And 
yeah, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking about migrating from YouTube completely because I, you know, this is, how do I put it? It is unpredictable, right? So YouTube does not explain what I did wrong and there's no way to know how I can fix this. And there's no way to fix it. Like, I don't know what was wrong in that video because it was literally me speaking about software development libraries and APIs. How does that violate any of the community guidelines? I have no idea and they don't explain. That means that at any moment I can get more of those strikes on any of my videos without any explanation and my channel will be just closed, right? And I will lose all the work that I've done in the past two years, which makes me very sad to be honest. You know, I don't, I don't really want to lose my work. I mean, I have produced more than 200 videos, yeah, 240 videos right now on this channel. Majority of them are pretty lengthy and very in-depth, uh, things like, you know, live streams or BXGS weekly, for example. And I am thinking about just backing this whole thing up and moving somewhere else. Um, like I, this is a question to you guys. So I have basically a bunch of options, right? So option number one, I just ditch YouTube completely and, um, keep using Twitch because, you know, I do majority of streams on Twitch and there's the channel. The obvious downside is that there won't be any long-term videos, right? So you do have the VODs over here, but they only remain up for 60 days, I think, right? And after 60 days, they will just disappear. So if you haven't watched it, basically, sorry, you know, you're screwed. That is something that I would not, I would prefer not to do. And I would actually prefer to have it um, persistent somewhere, right? So one option is to go to dev.2, which is an amazing community, great website, and they do allow uh, uploading videos. Now, um, I haven't asked the uh, Ben, uh, one of the creators of the dev2, if they would be okay with me uploading essentially 240 gigabytes of videos up there. But this is an option, right? And uh, well, they had some problems. I don't know if my old one is now fixed. No, it's still transcoding in progress. So it's there are some minor quirks, but in general, you know, I, I uploaded the BXGS weekly here and without too many problems. And it's it's a good website. It's nice. You have the video, you have the, some text added to it. So it's all nice and convenient. Um, again, I have to, I would have to ask them if they would be okay with me uploading essentially two years worth of content onto the website, right? So this is something that is um, open basically. The other option would be to go and buy a server, something like Petzner Online, right? So they have this uh, server auction here where you can say, okay, you know, I want like two terabytes of hard drives and this is like 20, 20, 30 euro per month, which is not that expensive. So it's like, yeah, there you go. Three terabytes in a rate with nice backups and everything, maybe you can turn it in. I mean, probably three terabytes is, is more than I need. So 240 videos, one gigabyte per video on average. So, and I produce like two videos per week. That should be more than enough for a couple of years, right? The problem would be obviously that this is servers hosted in Germany. So the people from rest of the world might have slight problems with, uh, bandwidth and performance in terms of, you know, downloading and watching that stuff. But uh, it still sounds better than relying on YouTube. I just don't, you know, it, it like I, after this kind of thing, I lost all the trust to YouTube. So I no longer want to work with them because they literally have the power of shutting me down without explaining anything, right? And they, they say, hey, yeah, this is the policies we have, but they never explain what exactly you did wrong. And this is mind boggling to me. So um, this is basically the options. Let me know what you guys think. So the idea with the server is actually, we I wanted to create the BXJS website anyway, because we need a nice um, BXJS weekly website that would you know show the links in a nicer manner than just a GitHub repo with, um, with files, which I mean, it, it works fine, but it would be better to have a proper website with search and sorting and tags, maybe in something like this. And maybe we can add the video there as well. And uh, another point is that I've been doing those videos and publishing them under Creative Commons for free on YouTube, because 
I know that there is a lot of people who are eager to learn, but they don't have an option to pay for that right now, right? And I don't want to take that away. I don't want to make my videos like some people suggested Patreon and make them paid only. And I don't want to do this, right? If you want to support me, awesome, great. If you have an op like if you have an opportunity to do this, this is amazing. But there is a lot of people who can't and, you know, they just can't do that right now. And they still want to learn and I want to support them. Like this is the whole point of that. So essentially question to you guys, um, we got three options. We can, I can, I, I probably will still keep, yeah, I probably will still keep uploading to YouTube just because it's still there, you know, and it's like my primary channel so far. I feel like I'm gonna be doing a lot more Twitch streaming um, and maybe not uploading everything to YouTube. We're gonna see how that d develops. Um, so the, um, Option number one is to move to Dev2, right? Uh, again, I will have to clarify with the guys if they're fine with me just coming with a billions of videos. <laughs> that might not be the case. And the option number two is just straight up renting a server and building our own website. So we can do it open source, we can do it on live streams and um, have it you know, nice and neat and clean. And uh, in this case, we're definitely gonna be controlling everything, right? And it's not that expensive, so this is, the kind of money that I can just pay out of my pockets is is not a big deal essentially, right? And um, yeah, so what do you guys think? What should we do with that? And uh, once again, as you know, as I said, if you wanna try to figure out why the video was flagged, the link is in the description to those two parts. You can watch it again and tell me if if maybe you know why it was flagged. <laughs> Because I would really love to know the reason. It's literally me talking about software development APIs and tools. And this is just ridiculous. Okay, guys, that's basically all I had to ask. So thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I see you next time. Bye.